Here I'm going to show you how to combine values from multiple cells in Excel. And I'm going to show you four different ways to do it. And which way you use is going to depend on what you're more comfortable with, how your data is set up, and which version of Excel you have. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. For the first worksheet here, I'm going to show you how to combine non-adjacent cells. So we want to combine type with size and serial number. And let me zoom in and let's start with the very first example. It is the simplest way to do it and it works for any and all versions of Excel. You type equals and then you go to the first cell that you'd like to have in there. This one right here, just click that. And then you do an ampersand, which is shift seven, at least on my keyboard. And then you select the next cell, then ampersand again, and the next cell. Hit enter, and it combines the values from all of those cells. This right here is the simplest way to do what is called concatenation, which is just another word for combining values. So we have this value, we attach it to this one, and we attach it to this one. Now one little tip, when you use the ampersand like this, you can put a space right in front of it or either side of it, and I do find that it makes it easier to read. So I like it like this. It will absolutely not change the output at all. And the ampersand, by the way, is used very, very often when you want to combine a value with a formula. So it's not just used to combine text. You could have a formula right here if you wanted to, like let's say a time formula and then have the values from the other cells still put here right after it. So this sign, the ampersand one, is probably one of the most important things that you're going to learn in this tutorial if you didn't know about it, because it's more versatile than just combining values. So if I left it like this and hit enter, we would get the output of the now function, which is a number. If you don't know anything about how dates and times are handled, that's what it looks like before it's formatted. And then you have the M and the three at the end. That might seem a little bit tricky, but the point is just that you can combine formulas and functions with regular cells or other formulas and functions using the ampersand character. It is a very powerful little guy that just combines whatever you put on either side of it. But let's go to the next one where we want to put a delimiter in here. And this is where this one gets quite tedious. So we select the cell. Now I want a delimiter. So how do I do that? Well, I use quotation marks and I put the delimiter in there. And then I just keep going like we did before. Then another one, quotation marks with a delimiter, quotation marks, another one, then the last cell. That is very tedious to do. But you can see it gives us the output that we would like. And it combines text in here with the range references, no problem. Now, this did take a while to do, but it's going to work in all versions of Excel. And oftentimes when you do this, what you're going to do is you're going to put this type of a formula at the end of a long list in a new column. And once you get it right in the first cell, then you can just copy it down for the entire list. In that case, if you're not just making a one-off formula, then it's not gonna matter that much that you took a little bit extra time to use the ampersand method for combining values. And now let's look at the last example. This is just to show you that it's very easy to change the delimiter itself. I'm not going to type this out. It follows the exact same pattern as the previous one, except for here, instead of dashes, I have used a colon. Now let's go to the next method down here, and this is the concatenate function. If you have a version of Excel that is older than, I believe, 2016, then this is your only option for a function to do what we just did and it is the concatenate function. You see down here it has the little yellow exclamation point because it is out of date. But this one joins several text strings into one text string. So to do what we did before, you just select a cell, comma, another cell, comma, another cell. Hit enter, and it does it for you. If you want to have a delimiter in there, you do it just like this where you have an entire argument right here as the delimiter itself. So if we were to type that one out, it's a little bit faster than using the ampersand. Concatenate, you select it, comma, then 
Don't forget your quotation marks because we are combining text strings So this method is a little bit faster, and it's easy to change the delimiters that we use. So a dash right there, and a colon right there. Now, if you have a version of Excel that is, let me go down a little bit, 2016 and up, so 2016, 2019, 365, you can use the concat function, which functions almost exactly the same way as the concatenate function but there is one little difference that I'll get to on the next tab. The little difference basically is that we can select ranges for this, and you'll see what that means in a moment. But when we have multiple non-adjacent cells, the concat function will work the same way as the concatenate function. Select a cell, comma, another cell, comma, another cell. If you want to have your delimiters in there, you're going to be doing the same thing as we did for concatenate. Once again, to change the last delimiter very easy, just a colon back here, or whatever you want. The point is you can put whatever you want in these cells. Even if you wanted to have another text thing here, let's even put an ampersand, why not? You can do that. It's very, very easy to do whatever you want here. But it is a little bit tedious. So thankfully, Microsoft has decided to gift us a new, lovely, amazing function which won't seem too helpful in this very first example, but you will see on the next worksheet, it's very, very helpful. So the new function that we have, if you are in 2019 or 365, is the text join function, equals text join, which basically is going to take care of the problem of having all the delimiters and everything that we just did. But let's do the basic example first. It's not that helpful for the basic example. The first argument is a delimiter. What do you want? Well, I don't want a delimiter for the first one. So let's just put an empty space in there, do a comma. Now, do I want to ignore empty or not? It's a little bit hard to see that. Let me move the cursor, there we go. Do you want to ignore empty? That comes into play if you have empty cells and you don't want them to be concatenated. And that's when you select ranges, which I'll show you on the next worksheet. So for ignore empty, let's just leave it at true, which is usually what you want. And like I said, I'll explain it more momentarily. Now here we go for the cells to combine. So you choose your delimiter if you want to ignore empty cells or not, and then as many cells as you want to combine over here. So we select our cell, then comma, our cell, comma, our cell. And that's what it's going to look like. It looks a little bit goofy, but let's hit enter and see that it gives us the same result as all the other ones. So let's do it down here with the delimiter, which is where it really shines basically it makes life much much easier because for the delimiter here we want a dash we just do a dash once that's it just once ignore empty sure leave it at true and now we can happily select the cells to combine and we don't have to keep redoing the delimiter hit enter and there we go so it really is quite helpful in that it makes it easier to manage to look at to read to see okay delimiter great Life is so good. But does it really make life easier if all of your delimiters are going to be different, or at least some of them are going to be different? Then it absolutely does not. And that's why you can't just use this new function for everything. So let's test it out. Let's do equals text join tab. What is the delimiter? Well, I want a dash in there for sure. Now, do I want to ignore empty? Sure. And how about the text? Well, I want a dash for ASC and for M, but now what? Well, if I select this and close it up, I'm going to get a dash between everything. I do not want that. I only want it between the first two. Okay, great. Now what? How do I do the last two? Well, this is why the ampersand is so, so important. Never forget your ampersand. Here, we are now going to combine the text join function using an ampersand with our new delimiter, which is just a colon, and then another ampersand, and we combine it with this cell value here. So that's what the final guy is going to look like. Hit enter, and there you go. Even with our new, nice, shiny text join formula, we are still stuck using a tool from some of the earliest versions of Excel. So never, ever, ever forget your ampersand. 
and when in doubt you can always revert to using the ampersand. So when does text join really come in handy? Well, let's go to the next page where we have adjacent cells. And that's where you will no longer want to ever use concatenate. So here, everything is pretty much the same for using the ampersand. You've got your ampersand, combine the cells, perfect, no problem. You have to select the cells individually. It's the same if you have the delimiter in there. And it's the same when the last delimiter changes or whatever else you want. Now, where things change a little bit, let's go with the concatenate function. So this is the function that you should no longer use if you have new versions of Excel. Well, what if I just select these and I go like this and hit enter? We get the spill error. Now, I get that because I am on a new version of Excel that would actually spill this across multiple cells, but that's not what concatenate is really supposed to do. So, what does this mean? It means it has an error. It's not going to work. To use this in the way that you expect it, you have to select all of the cells individually, which means it's going to be used just like we did on the previous worksheet, which means that it's not going to have any great benefits here when all of the cells are adjacent. But what will is the concat function equals concat. There we go. Select all three cells, one range reference, hit enter, and there we go. As easy as can be. So if you don't yet have access to the text join function and you want to combine cells that are adjacent and you don't need delimiters for them, the concat function is going to be great for that. But when you need a delimiter, you still have to do it like this. And that's when the text join function is very, very, very handy if you have access to it. And it's the same for this guy. So this is the same as the previous worksheet. Now let's do the text join here. So first up equals text join delimiter nothing go true for ignore empty and our text just one range enter there we go and when we want a delimiter we just go ahead and we pop a delimiter in there the dash for the first argument and now you can see this is really where the text join comes in handy and I have a separate tutorial just on this guy, and I'll link to it in the description for this video. But once again, if you want to change the delimiter, the last delimiter, any of the delimiters, then you still have to go through all of this jazz. The only difference from this and the one on the other worksheet is that this is now a range A2 to B2 instead of separately selecting the cells. But everything else is the same with the ampersand and selecting C2. All of that's the same. So without going into too much detail for text to join, because that tutorial on that function has some more examples, I want to show you what's so neat about the ignore empty. So I have it set to true for all of these. And let's go up here. Let me zoom out one and let us delete S. Now watch what happens when I delete S for all of these. Well, text join has beautifully updated to have no additional delimiter in it. Here we have additional delimiter, additional delimiter, additional delimiter, and also in these. But the text join, no problem. Now, if I change true to false right here, it will have the additional delimiter because it now no longer ignores empty cells. So usually you are going to want to keep it at true, but it depends on your data set, of course. And you can see how, depending on your data set and your version of Excel and what you remember or are more comfortable with, you may use either one of these methods. I'm going to say, always remember the ampersand. Then, depending on your version of Excel, use concat. Or, if you can, just go ahead and use text join as long as it works well for your data set. I would not use it in this case when you have a different second delimiter. That's just too annoying for me. But it's up to you which one you want to use. And now you know four different ways to combine values from multiple cells in Excel. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.